uh, the topic of my talk today is approach to tropical fever every year we see such kinds of news clippings and news uh, paper readings everywhere that there is a rise of dengue malaria infections the monsoon has led to increase in rise of uh, febrile illness let's see how these febrile illness and how to approach these infections so so these are the type of uh, clippings we see all from all over the country so what are the tropical fever tropical fever or the tropical disease are the disease that are prevalent or unique to tropical or subtropical regions most of these are vector borne and indian continent being one of the largest or tropical or subtropical regions it uh, tropical fever occurs in very large quantity um, amount in indian continent some of these occur throughout the year while most of these are seasonal and every year different parts of india are affected by affected by different seasonal fevers in the post monsoon period now why there is a rise in fi in monsoon and post monsoon season because of high prevalence of infective vectors increased human vector contact temperature humidity prolonged rains stagnant water floods abundant growth of vegetation sleeping habits of human density and biting pattern of vectors all these conditions provide favorable uh, menu for the disease transmission now what are the challenges faced in the management although this tropical fever looks simple but it is not very simple there are plethora of symptoms overlapping clinical presentations there are varied various atypical manifestations diagnostic dilemma non availability of diagnostics in every part of country most of the clinicians land up in empirical treatment leading to over treatment which may promote antimicrobial resistant resistance there are icu admissions high treatment related cost high morbidity and mortality so what is important in management of the tropical fever is most important detailed medical history and another is point of care test so what does the detailed history means apart from the normal history we take we should also know the onset of illness in relation to incubation periods of various illness pattern of fever associated clinical signs and symptoms like myalgia conjunctivitis altered sensorium etc geographical relation recent uh, geographical location recent travel history within country or from outside the country and most important knowledge of recent up outbreaks so afi can present in the in following ways it may be acute undifferentiated fever acute onset less than 2 weeks without any localizing signs and symptoms fever with rash and thrombocytopenia fever with ards fever with encephalopathy or fever with multi organ dysfunction syndrome so this is the common scenarios acute and undifferentiated fever common causes are malaria dengue chikungunya leptospira strep typhus enteric fever and any other common viral infections fever with rash and thrombocytopenia rash may be transient rash or or it may be associated with thrombocytopenia uh platelet count less than 1 lakh dengue rickets infection meningococcal infections falciparum malaria leptospirosis strep typhus and fever with ards acute onset of fever with uh, respiratory distress common causes are influenza nowadays sars cov2 virus strep typhus falciparum malaria fever with encephalopathy which may be cns involvement encephalitis meningoencephalitis these include the causes of meningitis viral encephalitis and fever with multi organ dysfunction which may be either hepato renal dysfunction shock altered sensorium respiratory distress now these are the common illnesses which we are going to discuss and these may have these kinds of clinical uh, uh, presentations and diagnostic test so how to approach a tropical fever let's start with a case scenario 44 year old male resident of new delhi with no prior comorbidities presented to general physician in month of september with three days history of fever which was high grade 102 continuous associated with chills headache myalgia so he was initially managed on in the conservative way and sent home fever spikes reduced with paracetamol but after two days there were severe myalgia headache was persistent there was redness in eye and decreased urine output since two days and patient had sudden onset of breathlessness altered sensorium and landed up in emergency in a tertiary care hospital this is a very common scenario which is seen in these uh, monsoon periods so on examination the patient was hypoglycemic with very low sugar spo2 was 88% high grade fever with hypotension pallor was present there was conjunctival suffuseness and bilateral course crepitations were present rest of the examination was normal so initial battery of test that were sent were cbc lft kft abg chest x ray rapid test for malaria antigen ts for malaria 
dengue ns1 antigen and igm since it was five day fever so both ns1 and igm was sent blood culture and ncct head so the initial investigations revealed hypoxia urea creatinine derange bilirubin was raised there was hypoxemia and metabolic acidosis and even anemia was present so this is the chest initial chest x ray which clearly shows bilateral infiltrates in the chest which may be a uh, pointer towards a developing ards so summary of the case a young patient no prior comorbidities afi of 5 days with headache myalgia altered sensorium respiratory distress hypoglycemia anemia shock and acute kidney injury so what could be dds so the dd should uh, can be initially lrti with aki sepsis with septic shock or it could be some tropical infection so but it the dds inside the tropical infection include malaria it could be malaria dengue leptospira scrub typhus enteric fever even chikungunya now patient was admitted to icu start initially started on the supportive treatment in the meanwhile call was received from the lab that malaria icd for falciparum is positive so the diagnosis of complicated falciparum falciparum malaria made an artisan combination therapy was started but there was no response to the treatment so what could be other possibilities it could be a can it be a dengue shock syndrome but then again it requires no additional treatment except from the ongoing conservative and supportive management so again a call was made to the laboratory uh, which again reported that it has a very high parasite load of the falciparum and dengue ns1 antigen and dengue igm both were negative so are we missing something in this case or we should wait for the therapeutic response again history was revisited travel history history of insect bite history of any pet exposure occupational history was taken an infectious disease consultation was done who started empirically iv septrixone and the doxycycline in the meanwhile information was received from the family that patient has recently returned back from uttarakhand so it was a it could be a, any travel associated fever now further investigation sent leptospira and scrub serology was sent even cpk was also sent because patient was reporting extreme myalgia ultimately patient responded to the treatment and the final diagnosis that came out to be later leptospira igg igm came out positive so the final diagnosis was complicated malaria due to falciparum and leptospirosis co infection cpk was around 2000 now what is the purpose of cpk in this whole clinical picture is that any patient presenting with calf tenderness extreme myalgia and very high cpk it points towards a leptospira now the leptospira is under reported and under diagnosed in our country because of the limited diagnostic facilities it is endemic in some parts of country like kerala tamil nadu gujarat cases have also reported from other uh, states like odisha west bengal now there has been increasing prevalence of leptospira in north indian states so these are the paper which shows the increasing prevalent prevalence of leptospira in north india with these papers are mainly from new delhi so the recommended case definition of leptospira according to ncdc is that any fi with headache myalgia prostration with history of exposure to infected animal or environment contaminated with animal urine with one of the following presentation mainly calf muscle tenderness jaundice hemorrhagic manifestations renal involvement and conjunctival suffusion so the probable case is any suspected case with presumptive laboratory diagnosis and the confirmed case is any suspect or probable case with confirmed laboratory test so any fi with hepatorenal involvement leptospira should be considered as one of the dd now these are the common diagnostic test used for leptospira a uh, dark field microscopy to see the uh, staining of leptospira but this is not routinely done because of its uh, it, it requires special info, uh, instrument microscopic agglutination test is a gold standard very high sensitivity and specificity even it is not routinely done because of it is a cumbersome procedure igm elisa rapid flow as lateral flow test and latex agglutination for icd cards these are the commonly used test apart from that there is a real time pcr to detect direct leptospira from the blood or urine samples this is a modified pains criteria for diagnosis of leptospira which includes both clinical criteria epidemiological factors like rainfall contact with contaminated environment animal contact and up then bacteriological or the laboratory findings so the ncdc guidelines criteria for diagnosis presumptive diagnosis is positive result in igm based assay either by latex agglutination elisa or immunochromatographic test 
माइक्रोस्कोपिक एग्लूटिनेशन टेस्ट मैट टाइटर इन एरिया ऑफ वेरी हाई एंडेमिसिटी लो टाइटर इवन हंड्रेड इज कंसिडर्ड एज अ पॉजिटिव एंड इन एरिया ऑफ लो एंडेमिसिटी टाइटर ऑफ अराउंड फोर हंड्रेड इज टेकन और डिमॉन्स्ट्रेशन ऑफ डायरेक्ट ऑर्गेनिज्म लेप्टोस्पायरा बाई स्टेनिंग मेथड्स confirmatory diagnosis include four fold rise in the mat titer between acute and convulsive sera in the paired sample or isolation of leptospira from clinical specimen sero conversion or pcr test so the rapid test available for leptospira are these are the rapid uh, test kits to diagnose igm apart from the elisa and these are the recently introduced uh, microchip real time pcr based assay for direct detection of organism in blood csf and urine with very short turnaround time semi quantitative method that is done in the true net nowadays because of covid most of the laboratories are now having true net so can consider these type of test now what is malaria as we all know that classical paroxysms include chills rigor fever spikes and profuse sweating fever periodicity depends on the species and the diagnostic features for severe malaria or the complicated malaria include cerebral malaria respiratory distress prostration hyperparasitemia more than 5% of parasite load severe anemia hypoglycemia jaundice renal insufficiency hemoglobinuria shock cessation of eating drinking repetitive vomiting and hyperparesia mostly it is more, more than 106 degree so any of one of these clinical presentation leads to the diagnosis of severe and complicated malaria now diagnostics for malaria include apart from the routine investigation a direct microscopy peripheral blood smear or by quantitative buffy coat antigen detection rapid card test or in ict based platforms are available and nucleic acid amplification test so as we all know direct microscopy this is a age old practice peripheral blood smear being sent for diagnosis of malaria it helps in diagnosis of mixed infections by speciation of plasmodium determine level of parasitemia and even monitor the therapeutic response so these are the ring forms and this is the gametocyte of the falciparum malaria but two important is to note is that single negative report does not rule out malaria in situation of very high clinical suspicious smears have to be repeated every 6 to 8 hours till 3 days in a positive smear repeat smears help in assessing therapeutic response quantitative buffy coat is a very easy method and a rapid method too but it requires a fluorescent microscopy because it uh, acridin orange directly uh, stains the dna of the malaria so this is a qbc tube and these are a fluorescent microscope and this is how it looks like in the qbc uh method so the rapid diagnostic test based on the icd method uh, there are two types of rdts that are available till now ldh is a biomarker this is a pan malarial antigen and histidine rich protein 2 it is specific for specific for the plasmodium falciparum so these are the icd test and now the important test uh, point to note is that this is malaria negative this is c is control line and this f is falciparum and this p is a pan malarial antigen positive for vivex obel or malaria and this is a mixed infection important thing is to note is that control line must be seen for test to validate and appropriately buffer to be used here which is provided by the kit no saline or no distilled water is to be used while performing this test comparison of various methods for diagnosis now microscopy requires minimum 50 parasites per microliter qbc requires 30 to 50 and icd requires more than 100 but the pcr is a very sensitive method and requires as low as 5 parasite per microliter of blood but again it is a costly method and it requires very expertise now what is the advantage of doing pcr when we have a rapid methods in peripheral blood smear advantages is being seen can be see from these case reports a case of quadruple malaria which was diagnosed by the pcr where all four species were detected in the patient and this is again malaria diagnosis by pcr where different kind of mixed infections and mono infections can be seen now why mixed infection is important to consider in case of malaria because of that gametocidal effect and the uh, extra hip, uh, rbc multiplication of the malaria as we all know that the there is a extra erythrocytic cytogony for which uh, uh, primaquine treatment is required and the dose is different for both the uh, vivex malaria and the falciparum malaria 
if we are able to diagnose mixed infection then we can give the treatment patient accordingly so as to prevent relapse or recurrence so again then true not has uh, launched malarial kits also for uh, for pcr based diagnosis of malaria now if we come back to our case scrub serology was also sent in that patient why it scrub serology was sent because the pointers in favor of diagnosis of scrub typhus was that patient has a recent visit to uttarakhand and patient mainly presented with afi with multi organ dysfunction syndrome but the point against scrub typhus was that the characteristic ishar which is seen in the scrub typhus was absent so the ishar is pathognomonic of the scrub typhus but it may not be present in all cases it is usually it has been seen that it has it is present only in less than or around 50% of cases so there has been reports showing co infections of afi in uh, adult patient this is a paper from the kangra district where mono infection scrub typhus was very common but mixed infections or dual infections were scrub typhus dengue dengue chikungunya scrub typhus leptospira scrub typhus dengue and scrub typhus malaria was present so it is important in case of every tropical fever to consider co infection because every infection may not have a same treatment another paper with dengue was associated with leptospira this is a paper from aims so study conducted over the period of one year pcr was done for all five species of malaria dengue leptospira and scrub typhus malaria and dengue co infection was most common malaria leptospira was seen in 70% of cases and malaria scrub typhus was seen in 8% of cases so scrub typhus in patients with afi a five year study from india again a paper from aims during the five year 1742 patients were screened and 12% of patients were diagnosed with scrub typhus the modality used for diagnosis was nested pcr elisa based method and the ifa method these these regions are endemic for uh, scrub typhus in our country a uh, clinical features of scrub typhus include afi acute on sudden onset of fever with chills headache myalgia ishar develop at the site of biting of the vector 55% of patient has reported ishar in a recent study from burgess et al from the cmc uh, apart from that maculopapular rash can also be seen and the complications include pneumonia ards myocarditis meningoencephalitis ultimately leading to multi organ dysfunction or hlh syndrome so again the laboratory diagnosis includes since it is a rickettsia infection these are intracellular organism difficult to isolate in a culture so serology igm detection is the most common used and the common platforms that has been used are immunofluorescence assay igm elisa which has a quite good sensitivity and specificity direct detection of scrub typhus by pcr based method can be done from the ishar or the blood sample So this is a comparative evaluation of molecular and serological methods, where both IgM ELISA, IgM lateral flow or rapid flow assay, and PCR was used. So specificity was almost similar in all three methods, and IgM ELISA has highly sensitive method for diagnosis of scrub typhus. This is another study, serological study, where ICD based methods were used, and sensitivity and specificity was quite high. uh true nat against scrub typhus pcr uh, detection is available and these are the rapid igm or igg cards now come let's come to second case scenario so 20 year old boy resident of rajasthan with recent travel history to latin america presented with fever headache myalgia joint pain for 6 days there was diffuse rash for 3 days conjunctivitis for 2 days on initial evaluation a uh, patient was hypotensive dehydrated with diffuse macular macular rash was present rest of the systemic examination was within normal limit on investigation there was anemia platelet count was almost uh, uh, not very low tlc there was some leukopenia with transaminitis so on 6th day we performed dengue igm elisa and it came out to be reactive uh, other test malarial uh, test scrub and leptospira serology negative chest x ray and abdomen were normal so initial diagnosis was dengue fever and again conservative management so this was a serial investigation on day 6 7 8 9 there was platelet drop and there was transaminitis also with rising hematocrit so seeing this type of clinical scenario the first diagnosis that comes to our mind is dengue fever again the management is conservative nothing is to be done so it was managed in the similar way but now on day 9 patient become confused disoriented 
there was a seizure patient became aggressive with the hospital staff serum electrolytes and glucose were normal ncct was normal patient gcs became very poor patient was intubated and ultimately to shifted to icu there was no improvement in sensorium even on day 12 mri brain done initial investigations with lumbar puncture done which shows uh, cell, there was no cellularity protein glucose was normal biofire for csf final for common viral and meningeal uh, bacterial causes of meningeal meningoencephalitis were normal zn stain and gene, gene expert was negative now we only have a diagnosis in our hand is a dengue fever but dengue fever leading to encephalitis is a rare case scenario what should we do, do next so finally mri brain also revealed uh, encephalitis we can see these kinds of hyper intensities in the cerebral cortex so csf was done for a multiplex pcr which was available at that time dengue chikungunya and zika multiplex pcr was available and ultimately zika virus came out to be positive so the diagnosis was encephalitis due to zika virus but we have all seen that dengue igm was positive so what could be the cause of dengue igm positive in this case it could be either dengue co infection along with the zika virus cross reactivity of igm among flavi virus it could be past dengue infection because igm can persist for one year or it could be false positive serology test due to technical errors now dengue zika and chikungunya all these three diseases are present almost with similar clinical features fever rash periorbital edema conjunctivitis even neurological signs are present in all three illnesses so these are the geographical distribution and timeline of the zika virus outbreak uh, recently india has reported zika from rajasthan madhya pradesh and few cases from south india so the clinical symptoms include rash fever again arthralgia conjunctivitis headache orbital pain edema vomiting laboratory diagnosis of zika virus according to the national guideline zika virus infection should be suspected in patient reporting with acute onset of fever maculopapular rash arthralgia among individuals those who have traveled to any areas where there was a ongoing transmission of zika virus in the preceding 2 weeks molecular test real reverse transcript test pcr can be done up to 7 days from the blood and 14 days from urine serology although not recommended because maybe because of cross infection ig and dgk igm elisa can be done plaque reduction and neutralization test viral isolation cumbersome methods and difficult to perform on may be done in some reference lab so zika elisa igm can become detectable by day 4 and can persist up to 12 week but every positive case to be confirmed by plaque reduction neutralization test again it could be false positive because of the cross reactivity with another flavi viruses now dengue fever as we all know it is a acute febrile illness with uh, constitutional symptoms of uh, headache myalgia etc dengue hemorrhagic fever include uh, fever constitutional symptoms and hemorrhagic tendencies thrombocytopenia evidence of plasma leakage in form of the rising hematocrit and dengue shock syndrome which include dengue fever hemorrhagic manifestations and the circulatory failure this is the classical dengue picture we we have been reading since ages dengue fever dengue hemorrhagic fever and the dengue shock syndrome but now national dengue guidelines 2014 has come out with some different classification dengue infection it could be asymptomatic or symptomatic symptomatic might be mild fever with constitutional symptoms it could be moderate uh, dengue normal constitutional symptoms with high risk comorbid conditions see as seen in infants old age pregnancy any immunocompromised patient or dengue fever and with any warning signs and symptoms like recurrent vomiting abdominal pain pleural effusion narrow pulse pressure hypotension by rapid fall in platelets or rapid increase in the hematocrit now this is expanded dengue syndrome which has been reported by some of the international guidelines which mainly includes apart from the normal routine features of the dengue Uh, complications seen in form of cns disease uh, lung involvement uh, heart involvement hepatorenal involvement so dengue virus is an under recognized causative agent of acute encephalitis syndrome as we all know that the most common cause of acute encephalitis syndrome in our country is japanese encephalitis so this paper report that dengue virus was detected in 5% of cases in acute encephalitis syndrome so any patient presenting with such type of illness dengue encephalitis should also be suspected this is another paper from aims where expanded dengue syndrome was seen uh, where a case of rapid renal failure 
biopsy proven rhabdomyolysis induced kidney injury presented with intracranial and intraorbital bleed so laboratory diagnosis as we are uh, uh, within early 5 days we commonly do ns an antigen test because of the viremia and following that five after five days we detect igm antibodies what is the significance of doing igg it only indicates past infection so uh, such type of patient should be taken with very uh, should be dealt with very cautiously uh, clinicians must become vigilant in such cases because it can lead to dengue hemorrhagic syndrome or dengue shock syndrome pcr can be done to detect dengue serotypes for epidemiological purpose and for even diagnosis in blood and csf samples so the probable dengue fever or dengue hemorrhagic fever is clinical criteria with non elisa based ns1 or igm positive that is a rapid test rapid test can yield false positive results due to cross reaction with another flavivirus malaria parasite leptospira and immune disorder confirmed case clinical criteria with detection of either ns1 antigen or igm antibody by elisa four fold rise in igg uh, titer viral isolation by pcr dengue rapid kits are available uh, but again that has to be confirmed by elisa but kits has very good uh, sensitivity and although the specificity is low now brahma vid vidas by biomerics has recently launched three automated tests for accurate diagnosis of dengue which includes ns1 igm and igg chikungunya so the chikungunya first appeared in 1963 and 65 then after that it underwent into the hibernation for 30 years and 2006 it was there was a very huge and outbreak of chikungunya where millions of people were affected in india clinical features include characteristically dried off fever joint pain and rash it may be asymptomatic infections or may present with the fever arthralgia rash even cns symptoms are present this is a classically seen in chikungunya where there is a uh, hyperpigmentation post fever hyperpigmentation is seen lab diagnosis of chikungunya include again chikungunya igg antibody are detected 7 days after onset of illness or initial phase I, uh, uh, nucleic acid detection can be done let's come to the last case so 9 year old boy presented to general physician with complaints of fever for 15 days pain abdomen for 15 days and decreased appetite with constipation fever was high grade 104 degree acute in onset chills and dry gut documented he had similar episodes last month for which he was admitted in some local nursing home where he received 7 days of antibiotic ciprazone as per the old records fever subsided and the patient was discharged old records the only relevant investigation that was available that typhi dot igm was positive so we have diagnosis in our hand is a enteric fever but again then patient has been treated with antibiotics why again patient is having fever and symptoms on examination journal looked toxic high grade fever there was tenderness in right upper abdomen hepatomegaly spleen tip was palpable and rest of the systemic examination was normal investigation includes a uh, battery of test blood culture sensitivity serum vidal typhi dot there was initially leukopenia with lymphocytosis vidal was highly raised uh, titer was more than 320 of to and th was 512 so diagnosis made was partially treated enteric fever the main purpose of presenting this case is that most of the typhoid fevers are not adequately treated they are given inappropriate antibiotics as soon as defervescence is there patients are discharged from the hospital without completing the course so it can again present with the similar illness so partially treated enteric fever should always be considered as one of the dd even if the patient has taken antibiotic and the complete history treatment history should also be noted now the disease burden of enteric fever is very high in our country since it is an endemic uh, zone for uh, enteric fever even mortality is also uh, in quite high so diagnosis of enteric fever include as we all know blood culture positive gold standard for in first week of illness serology vidal test typhi dot in second week uh, stool culture in third week urine culture in fourth week so serology is a vidal test it could be tube agglutination test or slide agglutination test and titer mainly more than 160 to be considered as a significant typhi dot rdt that is a rapid test 
uh, according to this concrete meta analysis it has got very uh, sensitivity of around 84% and specificity of around 79% Again, TrueNet Salmonella chip detection PCR is available by some chip based method. Sorry for the wrong picture. And uh, important to note that resistance of Salmonella is being rising in our country where we have now uh, facing with the challenge of extensively drug resistant Salmonella. So the multi-drug resistant Salmonella include resistance to all first line drugs, chloramphenicol, ampicillin, cotranoxazole. While extensive drug resistance include the multi-drug resistance plus resistant to fluoroquinolones and third generation cephalosporine. There has been outbreak, outbreak of XDR seen in Pakistan in a few years back and similarly small pockets were also seen in Mohali and Chandigarh area. So it's high time that we should consider type enteric fever also one of the important disease. So for any rapid diagnostic test for AFI, the assured criteria is to be followed, which is affordable, sensitive, specific, user-friendly, robust, rapid, equipment-free, and it should be a point-of-care test. So I have come across with this uh, tropical fever panel kit, although I have not used, uh, it is available in India, where eight tropical illness, dengue, chikungunya, plasmodium, rickettsia, salmonella, west Nile, zika, and leptospira can be detected. Thank you.